Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today we're going to talk about community fish tanks. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage. Stand by. Alright fishy folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and of course ding that notification bell so you know if I go live or release a new video. So today I want to talk about community fish tanks. What is a community fish tank? Well, it's typically a fish tank where fish that aren't normally found in the wild together are in the glass box. As an example, angelfish and swordtails, right? Swordtails come from Mexico, angelfish come from South America, Brazil area, that kind of thing. I'm fine, don't worry about it. And so many people keep community tanks. I have one myself. Um, you may go to the local fish store and go, oh, I like some of those glowfish, and I like some of those guppies, and I want that cool sword tail, and I want an angelfish or a guarmy or whatever. Those are community fish tanks. Um, when I set up a community fish tank, I like to have sort of a centerpiece type fish. Usually in my case they're angelfish because I love angelfish and so does upper management so it's a good way to get upper management on board with keeping extra fish tanks outside of the fish room. Then I like to have something on the bottom because I like the bottom to be clean. Not a bottom cleaner if you will but something that will whatever the fish don't eat and the food falls they eat um, I used to only keep plecos, and then I started keeping quarries, and I love the corridors because they school in the bottom, or show, whatever you want to say, um, and they're really, like, inquisitive, like, like, they, they just want to look around, and, 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 and their little bark, they're just so cute and adorable. So I keep a bunch, um, when you keep quarries, you're going to want usually six or more, and it doesn't necessarily matter if what kind of quarry, most of them will, will play together, will school together. So I have some albinos, I have some salt and peppers, I have a green or two. Um, there might be some other ones up in that tank as well. So now we have something sort of show pc um, If it's a bigger tank, like a 55, a couple of angels are nice. If it's smaller, maybe a 30 or a 29. You might have a couple of pistogramma or um, some uh, other type of small cichlid that's colorful. Um, and then I always like to have some sort of schooling fish as well. And this is just me, this is what I prefer. So in my case, I have Colombian tetras, red and blue Colombian tetras, and I have some neons, some black neons and some regular standard neons that all school together and it's really cool. And the thing about a community tank is you can pretty much do whatever you want. Now there are definitely some fish that don't go together and there's definitely some fish that require certain water parameters. As an example, you want to keep discus, which really like it soft, and something like guppies, which really like hard water, because neither of them would be happy. Also, um, if you keep any type of cichlid, whether it's an angel, a discus, African cichlids, or what have you, you're going to want to make sure what other fish are in the tank are not small enough to fit in their mouth. That doesn't just go for cichlids, that goes for everything. So some combinations I've seen are uh, garami as sort of the centerpiece fish with some sort of tetra or barb, and then on the bottom there might be some sort of catfish, a pictus catfish, you know, group or, or some quarries. Uh, like I said, I have angelfish with tetras and some quarries, but um, a good community tank, you know, some peaceful guppies, platies, and mollies, and maybe a pleco or two. Um, it doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure their water parameters are very similar. Um, feeding them, you know, they eat similar foods because uh, you don't want to have to spot feed, you know, if something is, is picky. Um, and you want to make sure they're not going to fight. Um, a lot of people like to keep male bettas in community tanks. And 
And uh, I know that it depends on the personality of the better whether you can do that or not. That's just not something I would probably do. Um, there's a reason why they're called Siamese fighting fish. Eventually, they're going to fight. Um, but the same thing goes with cichlids. You know, if you're going to have a dwarf cichlid like, a, like an epistogramma, eventually it's going to get pissed off at another fish and probably attack it. That's just a fact of life. Angelfish, some of the most peaceful looking fish I've ever seen. I've seen my prized angelfish. It's a uh, koi angelfish with really long fins. It's gorgeous, but it's an a-hole and it attacked two other angels and killed them. And there was nothing I could do about it because it was too late by the time I saw it and realized what was going on. So when you set up a community tank, there are definitely some rules that you should follow. Um, and you have to be careful with what fish you pick. So uh, that that's my shtick on the community fish tank. It's a great way to start uh, in the hobby. It's a great way to get a bunch of different fish that you can watch and enjoy and learn about the ecosystem of your little glass box. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below or hit up my website, michaelsfishroom.com and ask me there. Hope you guys have a great day and uh, I'll see you in the next one. fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fishing. Today we're going to talk about community tanks. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage. Stand by. That sounded like I jacked it up but I'm not sure if I did so I'm just going to do it over. Hiya fishy folks and welcome. I just spit a peanut from a peanut m and I'm going to take three. I need a... <clears throat> um, you're going to want to make sure that what other what and so some examples of um yeah okay <laughs>